Hi, everyone. I think we've all noticed that there's a nice pattern with even and odd numbers that we can prove. For example, the sum of two odds is always even, the product of an even and an odd number is always even, etc. What's kind of amazing is we don't need to know which numbers we're multiplying or adding, we just need to know whether they're even or odd. It turns out that we can extend this technique much more broadly, and we'll be talking about that today and in the next lecture. Okay, here's the definition. We say that A divides B, or B is a multiple of A, if B equals K times A for some integer K. We denote this by the following symbol. For example, we say that five divides 20, since 20 equals four times five. We also say that eight does not divide nine, because nine is not a multiple of eight. Here's a theorem that's also an algorithm, and it actually is called the division algorithm. We're not gonna prove this theorem now, but we will prove it later. Theorem, let B be an integer and let A be a natural number. Then there exists a unique pair of integers Q and R that satisfy these two equations. B equals Q times A plus R, and R is non-negative and strictly less than A. Another way of writing this is to think of it as an integer division where we say b divided by a equals q remainder r. Okay, so some examples. 14 divided by 4 is 3 remainder 2, because 14 is 3 times 4 plus 2. 24 divided by 5 is 4 remainder 4, because 24 is 4 times 5 plus 4. Minus 13 divided by 3 is minus 5 remainder 2, since minus 13 is minus 5 times 3, plus two. Note that the negative numbers are maybe strange and not quite what you expect, and that's because we always pick the quotient so it's less than the number so that the remainder is not negative. Okay, we say that A is congruent to B modulo N, written A triple equal sign B mod N, if they have the same remainder when dividing by N. So here's some examples. So we know that 5 equals 1 times 3 plus 2, 14 is 4 times 3 plus 2, so they both have a remainder 2, and so we say that 5 is congruent to 14 modulo 3. Also, 8 is 2 times 3 plus 2, and 10 is 3 times 3 plus 1, so 8 and 10 are not congruent modulo 3. They have different remainders. Now let's look at this list of numbers. 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, and 26, and keep going. These are all congruent to 2 mod 3. Can you see the pattern? More on this in a bit. Now here's a big theorem that relates remainders and division. Theorem. The integers a and b are congruent modulo n if and only if n divides b minus a. We will prove this theorem first going in one direction, and then the other. So let's take the forward direction. Let us assume that A and B are congruent modulo N. By the division algorithm, this means that A equals Q1N plus R, and B equals Q2N plus R. We don't really care about Q1 and Q2 here, but we do care about the remainder, and by assumption they have the same remainder. Now let's subtract B minus A, and we see that when we do the subtraction, the remainders cancel, and therefore b minus a is a multiple of n. We have proven the forward direction. Now let's do the other direction. Let's assume that n divides b minus a, so that b minus a is k times n for some integer k. Let us apply the division algorithm to a and b, so we get a is q1n plus r1, b is q2n plus r2. Note that we do not know that R1 equals R2 at this stage, because that's what we're trying to show. But we have these formulas, let's subtract. So when we subtract B minus A, we obtain this equation, 
Let's solve for R2 minus R1, and we get this equation, and plug in by our assumption, and we see that R2 minus R1 is a multiple of n. Now we're not quite there yet because we want to prove it's zero, but we're getting there. So recall by definition for both R1 and R2, we have that these numbers are non-negative, greater than or equal to zero, and strictly less than n. So let's do a little bit of algebra using the inequalities. Let's remember to flip the inequality when we multiply by minus one, and after a little bit of work, we see that R2 minus R1 is strictly between minus n and plus n. But remember that it is also a multiple of n. And there's only one multiple of n in that range, the number zero. Look, it can't be as big as plus one n because it's less than n, and it can't be as small as minus one n because it's bigger than minus n. There's only one multiple that can fit inside there, and that's zero times n, which is zero. And we have now proved the theorem. Okay, back to that sequence. 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, and so on. And you might have noticed that this sequence, everything differs by three. We're jumping up by three each time. So here's a statement we can make, is n is congruent to two modulo three, if and only if n equals three k plus two, where k is an integer. And to make this argument, what we do is the following. Note that n is congruent to 2 mod 3 if and only if 3 divides n minus 2 by our theorem, which is true if and only if n minus 2 is 3k for some k by the definition of divides, and this is the same as saying n equals 3k plus 2. 